you really start with filming? Of course, always. Hi guys, today I want to give you maybe another view of your reef tank and about what happens there. So that's why we stay outside. It's nice and hot today, so we try to make it some fast because it's really hot. This space, what you can see here, it's uh, probably the size of the surface of a uh, 100-200 gallon reef tank. Hopefully it looks not like this base. But what I want to introduce you is how big and how important the surface which you have on your reef tank and why it's not so good to have too much surface. That is what we talk about today. That's why we stay here under the sun and uh, nearby 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, in a few seconds after the intro, I'll be back for you. All your decoration and PVC pipes, filter material, whatever you have, which is in contact with your water, is a space where bacteria can grow on it. So, if you make everything of that flat, like for bacteria, like for us, a flat place like this, the bacteria have a huge surface in your aquarium. It's really huge. So, but let us think about that 100 or 200 gallon reef tank has about the size of a football field, like that. Somebody of you will say, yeah, but I have full of corals all my way. Say, okay, all the aquarium is full of corals. But in relation to the surface you have, it's like this, one coral is here. Um, I take the white one cause it's a little bit too dry for the live ones, <laughs> so I hope, uh, not that anybody will ask me, so uh, sure they are dead because they lay around. But in fact, you have maybe a situation of a reef, which is like this. So a few yards or uh, meters, you will have maybe one core. And all the space, which is here and around, is empty. Oh. We have a full aquarium, so it's fully stocked. So that's one of the thing. If you look at the coral farms, you see that they work a little bit different. They have no much surfaces or filtration materials or rocks or whatever. They try to fill up the tank complete with corals. The trick behind that is that the corals contain a lot of bacteria on the surfaces and these are the filters and these are the bacteria which we want. We don't want to have all the surface full with bacteria because there's not much nutrients for them. And if there's not enough growth for bacteria, then other things can grow like cyanobacteria or whatever. And the most reason for that is that you put a lot of fertilizers for algae in the tank. And now I think how people say I don't use fertilizer. Yes, you use. You use it with trace elements, you use it with nutrients. If you go to a garden center and you look at the plant fertilizer, what's stated at ingredients, what you find, magnesium, potassium, nitrate, phosphate, everything is in there as a plant fertilizer as we also have in the reef tank by the food by coral food by trace element solutions whatever you can buy everything's containing a type of fertilizer and the most problem what we have today even the growth of bulges and cyanobacteria and that stuff is a over fertilization of the reef tank that creates the problems because corals they live in the sea with a lot of water and very limited surface and the surface is living so it's full of bacteria it's full of sponges because they get enough nutrients. In the aquarium it turns around. We have a huge space, you can maybe show how huge it is here, and all that collects everything what you put in the aquarium. And it collects also all the precipitations you do due to the using of wrong materials. And these precipitations happen directly on the surface because calcium and carbonates and kalk water and CO2 and carbonic acid and all that chemical things around will immediately react if they touch the surface because the surface is full of bacteria and organic compounds creating also precipitations. So that's why the key for successful reef keeping is the so low surface as possible. 
If you look such a coral, it's very porous. You see the holes inside. Now, think about it like a pub, okay? If the free beer is on the street. Oh, this is so German channel. Why the heck you would go into the pub here? Yeah. So, and that's the same for bacteria. So the bacteria sit here on the surfaces, on the biofilms. That's what you feel if you go with your fingers over the glass and it's a little bit slimy. That's the bacteria film. And in that bacteria film, there is the reduction of nitrates and stuff. Why the bacteria should go into the thing till it takes weeks, till the water comes in. So they cannot change the water inside these small porous holes. This makes no sense. And it's different to a freshwater aquarium where we have maybe a root and we have some plants. The plants, they take them, they have the bacteria, also some on the surface, but not their own. So they use it with the roots, with the corals. They are covered completely with the microbiome. And these bacteria, they do taking the nutrients in. They release the nutrients from the corals, they're producing the sugars, they're producing the other stuff. What we want is a healthy microbiome of the corals. We don't want a lot of surface. For what reason? We try to get low nutrients. We don't have a high nutrients. That's a different thing if you have a fish aquarium. So with maybe a few artificial rocks and that's it. We talk about reef tanks and reef tanks are the corals to filter. This is what is to understand. So that's why every successful reef keeper, and you can look wherever you want, did you ever see a really successful reef tank which is empty? No. The trick is like in the planting that you put a lot of corals in. And even if you start, if you say, yeah, it's too expensive with, with all that small fracks. Sure, this small fracks thing is stupid at the end because we have no biomass. If you start a reef tank, you don't need a lot of bacteria, products or whatever. What you need is corals and critters. To using at the beginning a lot of food, even if you have some kind of food which is colored. Did you ever see that the reef is colored by food? No, all that food which is there is not colored. It's particles, it's food, or it's liquidized, which is as an organic compound into the water, but it's not colored. Everything which is colored is not a food for the corals, not in liquid state. The main thing to get rid of problems in the reef aquarium is to avoid these large surfaces. Because in fact, you have an aquarium which have maybe a few millimeters of water, and a few square meters of surface. That's the reality as a reef tank, not what you see there. And in the reef outside, it's totally different. That's also why we're always smiling about all these nice myths around, oh, we have large knowledge because we have a boat go fishing and drinking and then we do science at the same time. Or if we talk about it, you need a lot of surface. For what reason? All these coral farms worldwide, where you look, they don't have trickle filters, they don't have extra materials. They have a little bit of carbon, they have a skimmer, and then they have the tanks fully covered with corals. That's why they grow and be, stay healthy for many years. And they keep it clean. Usually they use technologies to avoid precipitations or they take a lot of work in it to take it out. But they have no surfaces where all the precipitation can go to the surface. Because that's the reason why your pH go down. You create precipitation like you're using calc or sodium carbonate or some concentrated stuff. This precipitation goes onto the cores and to the high pH, they, they will not go back. The bacteria now on the surface, they try to reduce that, and you, even those bacteria who do that. In this case, they're producing H+. That means your pH go down. You said, oh, my pH go down, I have to dose more. So you dose more of this concentrates to keep the pH down. But then you create more and more and more and more different type of organic and of precipitations on your surfaces. And they're highly active, like every filter is active as bacteria. And that means you're producing H+. That means it goes down the pH, down, down, down. You have to puffer it and puffer it and puffer it again. If you use it as bicarbonate system like the boiling light system, you can avoid this because with this way you're only creating micro crystallized precipitations which come back. So for this I recommend to read of the Bolus method and then you can avoid this. It's not 100% but it's way less than any other concentrated material because that's marine chemistry and aquatic chemistry and it has nothing to do with these theoretical wordings and speaks and whatever so many people nowadays have around to explain what's everything what's wrong what we do but the big difference is that we have an ICP test we have a coral farm running now since 20 years and all of these guys they have what? Ah, uh, uh, sure, there was something. They have no aquarium. So I have no idea why they have this knowledge about that what happens in a reef tank. Because if you want to look on the chemistry of a reef tank, you have first to look on the biology of a reef tank. Because that changed everything. Which is maybe right in a glass of water in a beaker could be wrong in a reef tank. You should see the whole picture. And I hope I can give you a little bit of sign 
for you and an idea for you how it looks in real on your reef tank because that's the reality of every reef tank even when it's quite covered with corals and that's why you need to think a little bit different about all these myths and theoretical views which you see around because we are no scientists me no i'm an aquarist guy and i break corals since 84. for me the key is that corals grow and not getting white like this one so that's what we want then we go inside the farm now and then I'll show you about how we do it in the farm. We look on some cores and then I can explain a little bit more why I said before the critters are so necessary for the cores and why the surface stuff plays a big role. But then you can see how it works really proper and it's cheaper. Now we are back at the farm. One thing which I want to show you that the Fondo Marine itself or me itself, we are aquarists. So we are no scientists. I do scientific work sometimes for some universities where we take care of the coral grow or their farms, whatever. But we are not a scientist looking for one thing. So we try to get the whole picture of aquarium what that means it starts from the food of course it goes into the physics of an aquarium and how to take care of the entire things and that's also why we know why surfaces plays a role how all the farms look like because we have combination between farming which we do here in this place since 2006 we started with farming at the 90s i know all these days where we work with rocks and ceramics later coming where we have trickle filters and all these techniques which we see nowadays again and again and again so like uh, several melodies of music which is also recovered we have the same situation now but a little bit better marketing if a coral farm runs with very limited surface a lot of corals, skimmer, lights, a good water movement and three small filters. Why you need then all these fancy things which you buy for many money? Think about that so you can save the money easily if you concentrate on a few things but get there a good quality. Let us come back to the surface. As you see here this tank here is running I think the last time we cleaned it was about uh, 2009, 8, something like that. So and you see that we have here a kind of surface which is uh, partly it's a kind of uh, algae growing here very hard and some calcareous algaes also and also on the surface of these acrylic we have no other surface here there's no rock or you see it's no sand nothing it's only that but full covered of course this surface is grown and i take care that the microbiome, so the bacterial film which grows here everywhere, keeps healthy. And then I put sometimes a live rock in, like you see here. And that's not the reason to increase the surface. The reason for the live rock is to get some new bacteria in, who keeps the stability of the microbiome into the system and which helps to keep the cores healthy and clean. This tank which I show you now, it's runs 18 years now. We want to change the way how we produce our corals a bit so we go more and more in the only farming so we don't do any importing and our problem is how longer I keep corals together in one system how less resilience they become so I need to change the corals each other all the time that they can work with the microbiome to give them a good quality one question Claude because you said that is it important for reef tanks at home also the if stocking? you want to run them long time yeah that's why our tip is every half year a small piece of live rock put in or change some corals so take a new coral in so that new bacteria is coming in because corals change their microbiome very often and I know it's not clear for many people but we have quite of the same system here in our stomach area we live with a lot of bacteria and everybody if you know it if the bacteria are healthy you have a nice day if they're ill I don't want to talk more detailed about it but I can promise it's not a good day at the end we have the same situation here the only difference between us and the coral is that the microbiome is inside the cords and outside the cords and that's why the surface of the corals which is also large is our filtration this is our filter 
they take the nutrients, they take the elements, and this type of bacteria is that who keeps the tank clean. We have run such tanks like this. We can add a whole import of several hundred freshly coming aquapora inside and nothing will get turbid. We have no UVC running on it, nothing. It's a bacteria though. That's why we don't clean the tanks normally because it took me about half a year to a year to get this type of stability. But now, after all that years and after the situation that in the last one, one and a half years we don't do any imports, we don't get a lot of live frogs, all my bacteria settles down and I had difficulties to keep the system in that kind of stable like I want. You could do that with bacteria and live frog adding in, but I decided to make it complete clean. It's also one of the reasons that all the tubes are full of material, which we cannot clean during it runs. So that's why we decide some of the tubes here of the PVC types are blocking and that's why we need to clean everything and we decide after 18 years now because this one we start in June 2006. And also here you can see that a lot of stuff is encrusting over the years. Yeah? So, and everything of these cultural rocks which you now easily can remove and that's what we do here, you can see that. So, and all these parts which we remove here I'm sorry for the blue light now. This creating all huge surface. So that means parasites can hiding in under things. Sometimes you get rotten parts under the stuff too much grows and that's why we clean it as good as possible and reducing the surface that you can restart the system and put the salt water in. Then we put some live rocks in to get the right bacteria. And after two weeks, we start to put the corals in. Our focus is not of the type of the corals and this is an SPS. No, I put some soft corals there so that I get the biomass. They're producing sugars and these sugars creating a good bacteria health. The next step is that we put a lot of critters like snails. The snails eating the first biofilm on it and turned it into ammonia and a different way of bacteria growing fast to keep the system stable. The same thing is then in a system who runs longer time. That's why we add always snails on it. Because the snails take care that the bacteria film and everything is to be eaten and can be renewed. This keeps the amount of different bacteria at a high level. Start bacteria are working. If you decide not to use any live frog or uh, if you want to start, so they can be a good help. But nothing is as good as a piece of fresh live frog. And be aware of products who tells you they are good for fresh and salt water. This is... Um, I don't want to say it. Companies there, they're producing specific saltwater bacteria or mixture which runs good in salt water, which have a very high amount of bacteria because you need, because we are not able to breed them in salt water. So you need some specific species that they can handle the salt. If it's for fresh and salt water, you will lose 99% of all the bacteria at the moment you dose it. And that's why it makes no sense. So companies like we do, there are also some others, specific doing for seawater. That's why we don't have bacteria for fresh water. And if we do it, they are totally different than that one which we have in the seawater section. Take the surface of your aquarium as small as possible. Don't use any concentrated materials, carbonates or something like that. The best system is to work with bicarbonate and it works in seawater totally different as in freshwater or in some lectures or some forums. What they said, try it out, you will see. There are thousands of people running now our new bolus method who makes these dosing more simple, easy and very successful. And keep the tank clean. So use some critters, use some live rock and do not dose too much of ready bacteria products. They have their sense, they are also good if you have a problem, but keep it. If you have a problem, then you can use it. But if you want to have a tank that's run very long, so over one and one and a half years, and if you want to avoid all these old tank syndrome, whatever, then look on the primary care system with a two or three part method based on the bicarbonate system together with the right trace elements. Add some critters, and take care that you have less surface as possible and most amount of cores as possible, even when you start only with soft cores. That's the best way to do it and you will have success. And if you have more questions, write it down in the comments. We'll be very happy to see it and give us a like, whatever necessary in YouTube. <laughs> have a good day, guys. Many thanks for your interest. Bye bye. Sure, people are wondering why they find small pieces of dead corals at the parking place here. Yeah, because I broke one of these. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have to cite these regulations. We glue it back and maybe this will help. <laughs>